Cycloidal drives are a type of speed reducer. They are usually attached to electric motors to reduce its speed. In this example, the motor shaft spins much faster compared to its output. Such drives can be attached to other structures like the base of a robotic arm. And large torque produced by the drive is enough to rotate a heavy robotic arm. There are larger drives in this robotic arm, capable of producing enough torque to lift itself up. At the heart of cycloidal drives, there is an eccentric nut mounted onto the motor shaft. It helps to push a disc with cycloidal profile off the center. When the motors start to spin, the disc is being forced to shift in and out. When cylindrical pins are positioned around the disc, the disc will mesh with the pins when the eccentric nut force it to shift in. As the disc engages the pin, it rotates slightly and disengages. In this drive, it takes 48 revolution by the motor shaft for the disc to complete one revolution. The cycloidal disc is the source of amplified torque. However, the disc wobbles and does not connect well to external structures. To make good use of the torque from the disc, a set of load pins and load plate are needed. The load pins are inserted into holes in the cycloidal disc together with the load plate. A nylon spacer are inserted to constrain the load plate at the center. As the disc wobbles and revolves, it pushes against the pin and transferred its torque to the plate. To keep the load plate in place while allowing it to rotate, a thrust bearing is placed between the load plate and the cover. The cover is screwed in and helps secure all internal components whilst protecting the cycloidal drive from the environment. In second part of this video, we will explore how such cycloidal drives are designed. This drive is made up of four different stages. The first stage has the casing which holds onto the stepper motor and cylindrical pins. The second stage is the cycloidal disc which has a bearing and an eccentric nut in the middle. The third stage has load pins attached to a load plate. It is constrained concentrically by a bearing and a nylon spacer. The last stage is the cover and it holds a thrust bearing below. Let's take a closer look at the first stage. The first stage has a casing and the casing has three purposes. The first purpose is to hold 3 mm pins in place. To ensure the cycloidal drive is as compact as possible, these pins are spaced closely whilst ensuring enough space for cycloidal disc to mesh in between the pins. There are 49 bores with enough space for the pins to slot in. The stepper motor is attached to the casing through four internal bores. Another four threaded bores on the outside allow the casing to be attached to external structures. Threads along the rim of the casing allow a cover to be screwed in. This helps to keep the drive compact as no additional thread bores are needed for the cover. The second stage consists of a disc with a cycloidal profile. It is a special type of profile that enables the disc to rotate as it meshes with the pins. You can check out simple steps to model such profiles in our website. There are five large bores in the disc and the load pins are inserted into those bores. The bores push the load pins as the disc wobbles and rotates. In the middle of the disc, there is a bearing to allow it to rotate freely around an eccentric nut. The eccentric nut is responsible for positioning the disc off the center by half a millimeter. The eccentric nut, bearing and the cycloidal disc are mounted onto the motor shaft. Next, we will take a closer look at the third stage. The third stage consists of load pins and a load plate. The diameter of load pins is the diameter of the large bores minus twice the eccentricity. The load pins have countersunk bores and are secured by countersunk screw. This help ensure the pins are positioned accurately and minimize backlash. The load plate has 10 threaded bores, 5 are for load pins while another 5 connect to external structure. To restrict vertical motion in the load plate, a thin flange along its peripheral hold a thrust bearing. As the cover closes, it pushes down on the thrust bearing and constrains vertical motion of the load plate. To restrict axial motion, a bearing and a nylon spacer in the middle is sufficient. The last stage of the cycloidal drive is the cover. It has thread on its side to allow it to be screwed into the casing. This keeps the cycloidal drive as compact as possible. Underneath the cover, there is sufficient space to hold thrust bearing and secure it in place. Additional slots on top of the cover provide an anchor for tools to screw the cover in tightly. We have come to the end of this video on cycloidal drive. You can download the design files for free from our website. We look forward to what you are going to create with our cycloidal drive. If you have a beautiful product idea that you want to transform into reality, check out our free premium courses that help you learn how to do it fast. Hope you like this video. See you soon.